Shaw Memorial is the greatest public sculpture of America's greatest period of public sculpture. That is the period of the City Beautiful movement in the late 19th century. It begins with the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago in 93. Sculpture is basically act. It's a body in space. Our architecture is primarily environment. It makes a space. And human beings make an environment for themselves and they act in it and they embody their acts in sculpture. St. Gaudens gave so many people a sense that the city was an important thing, that it was a noble thing, and that America had a noble past. I think the Shaw Memorial is a very moving experience when you first see it. And what I always notice first are the black soldiers who are leaning forward slightly as they march south out of Boston, heading to destiny. And what moves me is this look of determination on their face. They're leaning into the future. Once a black man put on that blue uniform with the gold buttons and U.S. and carrying a rifle, a weapon, and performing a mission for the nation, then ultimately no power on the earth can persuade that individual that he is not the equal to his white brother. And they are in the middle of it on a horse, sitting up tall is Colonel Shaw. In many ways, Colonel Robert Gould Shaw was just another one of the tens of thousands of young men doomed to die fighting for the Union Army during the Civil War. But his fate took a different direction when he was commissioned to lead the 54th Regiment of Massachusetts, the first all-African-American volunteer unit to fight in the war. While Shaw himself was white, he was determined to show the world that African-American troops could be the equal of their counterparts. He fought for equal pay and proper uniforms and proudly led them off to war from the foot of the State House on Boston Common in front of hundreds of onlookers. Poet John Whittier remarked, I can never forget the scene as Colonel Shaw rode at the head of his men, the very flower of grace and chivalry. He seemed to me beautiful and awful as an angel of God come down to lead the host of freedom to victory. The 54th Regiment finally got their chance to fight in South Carolina. After a brief battle in which they fought bravely, they marched to Fort Wagner, a Confederate stronghold on the coast. And on that fateful day, they marched down the beach and in the tradition of military tactics of the time, they massed themselves and walked right into that fire. And as the story is told, they started to break, which is not unheard of when you're facing that kind of direct fire coming at you. And it was Colonel Shaw who stood up and said, keep going, lads, keep going. This is not the time to break, and they didn't. And they continued into the withering fire, into the trenches and over the top where they met their fate. Shaw was one of the first to die as he led his men over the top of the parapet. More than half the regiment was either killed or wounded that day. A Confederate lieutenant later said, the Negroes fought gallantly and were headed by as brave a colonel as ever lived. Twenty years after the death of Colonel Shaw, St. Gaudens was commissioned to create a memorial honoring the fallen hero. At first, he had decided to make a lone equestrian figure, but when Shaw's family requested that he include the troops, he became totally consumed by the monument. St. Gaudens later wrote, I increased the conception until the rider grew almost to a statue in the round, and the Negroes assumed far more importance than I had originally intended. The monument had become a labor of love. In his obsession to make the monument as realistic as possible, he modeled 40 different men for the heads of the soldiers. As the size and scope of the project increased, deadlines for its completion came and went. The head of the Shaw Memorial Committee wrote, People are grumbling for it, the city is howling for it, and most of the committee has become toothless waiting for it. St. Gordon said, it's the way a thing's done that makes it right or wrong. That's the only creed I have in art. 
After all, statues are plastered up before the world for centuries while men and nations pass away. The Shaw Memorial was unveiled on May 31, 1897, 13 years after St. Gaudens began work on it. He sat silently on the review stand while Augusta took photos of the retired members of the Massachusetts 54th, marching in tribute to their fallen comrades. One critic called it a symphony in bronze. Shaw frightens me and moves me. My heart breaks for those troops. All those wonderful faces, the old man, the boy, the, oh my goodness. And you feel they are dedicated to death. And they're choosing it. They're choosing it. And so you feel awe. Oh, I mean, I think you're up, lifted out, out of yourself and you're awed and you wonder about human life. You wonder how people have this power, how they have this strength, how they have this determination. How they could focus like that, how they could do that, how they could walk up to that rampart where they didn't have a chance. Amazing. Making public sculpture is one thing. Making a work of art is another thing. St. Gaudens was struggling over a part of the memorial, that is the floating angel above the soldiers. But what is remarkable is how he takes that, if you will, snapshot of real life and makes it a monument by introducing the allegorical figure. So he takes it out of the moment and puts it into the ethereal. The art historian Vincent Scully wrote, St. Gaudens sets these people here as only a great sculptor can do, populating our world with living bodies, filling it with their will to act, their resolve, marching down Beacon Street just as they in fact marched off to the war, to the eternal glory of them all. We are PBS. 